Happy hump day, everybody, and welcome back inside the lab to your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, and on Wednesday's episode, it's the top five best young studs, 23 or under in the fantasy game. Thank you for joining us. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every once in a while, Fantasy Fanatic, Steele and I got to do a top 10 breakdown. And on today's episode, we're continuing the top 10 best fantasy studs in the game, 23 or under. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a 100 bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Steel, sometimes in these middle of the week, start of the seasons, news can get a little slow. A couple past couple of weeks, injuries, lots to talk about on and off the ice. That's why we hit in the middle of the week these top tens. We still got our bets for Wednesday night. We got a four-game board, some very intriguing matchups that I'm ready to talk to you about. But let's continue our list because yesterday we were pretty close. Today I think we're going to be basically the same for the most part. But these pieces right now, if you can get one of them on your team or perhaps two, you are set up for success. Keeper dynasty wise, for sure. But just year to year, my goodness, there's some studs in my top five and I know in your top five. Yeah, and I'm starting off at number five with Maurice Sider of the Detroit Red Wings. You know, going into uh, going into this season, I wasn't or. After last season, I wasn't quite yep. sure if he was uh, necessarily a keeper in those formats, just mm-hmm. based on how he was playing last year. But we know he's going to be a stud throughout his NHL career, and he's starting yes. off real hot, a lot better than we saw in 2022-23 season. Ten games so far for uh, the Detroit Red Wings. He has ten points, one goal, nine assists. Uh, he's on the first power play unit. He's on the first penalty kill unit. He's on both ends of the ice doing everything that they need uh, that Detroit needs out of him to be again, one of those star defensemen uh, in the NHL right now, 16 hits, 20 blocks, 13 shots, um, six penalty minutes. This guy's a banger league beauty. Cause he's yep. going to be starting to get a lot more hits and a lot over 200 hits last year, 151 hits in his first season. The peripheral stats are off the chart. So if that yep. can just transfer into his offensive side of things, you know, start to see what Rasmus Dahlin is doing for Buffalo with his peripheral stats and the offensive side of his game. So Marie Sider is on, uh, is on this list. He makes the top five for me. And he is now one of those guys that I'm looking for as a keeper, as you know, facilitate a trade for, because he's just that good. I'll save my take for a hot second on Marie Sider. All of what you said, I agree with. He's number four on my list at number five is Cole Caulfield, which I believe you had at number six or seven. So our lists aren't far off. And I got a quick take on Reed Sider because I think of what a lot of what's happening with him is coming through the confidence of this entire Detroit team. Yeah. You're starting to see it with Larkin. Even Raymond is starting to get going. Obviously, Debrincat's addition has been huge. I'll save my quick take on Sider for a hot minute. Cole Caulfield. We talked about him yesterday's episode. I'm going to keep this brief because I think we've covered all the angles here. But when I dug into Montreal's numbers this year, Steel. They are having a really good start to the season, right? 5-2-2, two, and two, 12 points sitting in third in the division. Not something you and I expected. But maybe I don't think this might be as sustainable as it might look right now. Their goal differential is minus two. That's the worst out of any team in the top six in the Atlantic. And when I dig into those special teams numbers, steal, the power play has not been that good. And that's what I wanted to say about Cole Caulfield. Looking at his numbers over his career, power play goals, he only has 13 power play goals in his career. And I know it's a limited sample size, but imagine the Montreal Canadiens got it going on this power play. Young team, rebuilding, give me another year or two. This kid is also what? You know me with ages, Steel. He's 22 years old. So fast forward two more years and this Montreal team gets it going in other areas of the ice. 
I really think Cole Caulfield's stock continues to rise offensively. We know you're not drafting this player for peripherals, but the offensive capability is straight elite, 40-plus goal caliber when he's on his game and healthy, and I really do think, Steele, as this team improves, especially on the power play, you're going to see Cole Caulfield continue to rise in value in the fantasy realm. It's really just finding different ways to get him, uh, Cole Caulfield, into scoring opportunities and scoring chances. Exactly. You know, just to compare with the Toronto Maple Leafs, we've seen this over this uh, the span of this season so far. Mitch Marner down below the goal line, looking for those angles on Austin Matthews and William Nylander across uh, crease or as Austin Matthews drives from the blue line. So trying yep. to find different. Uh, different angles and different situations to get Cole Caulfield moving around the ice is something to continue to look for uh, and get the Montreal Canadiens power play going in the right Boom. direction. But Cole Caulfield's offensive game is elite right now, and that's why Montreal's off to a hot start. Thank I you. don't believe you have this player on the list, and this is the one I said that I might have taken a little bit of a <laughs> different direction here, that's but okay. I had to have him I like on. it. Andre Svechnikov has to be on this list. And for okay. me, he cracks the top five. I've been so high on this okay. guy for you the have. last three seasons. I love his game. I, th I think he is the powerhouse that drives Carolina's offense. I know Sebastian aho has got all the talent in the world. I know they've got some studs on the blue line as well. They've got great goaltending. Mm. But Andre Svechnikov, for me, is the number one guy in Carolina. You know, he comes, he's, he's just gotten back from injury. He's only played two games so far. So two games in, one assist. Four, pe uh, four penalty minutes so far. He's got five hits, one block, five shots on net. The peripheral stats for this kid are, are really good as well, especially in the hit and shots on net, uh, shots on goal category. And then the offensive production side. I just see so much upside for this player. Uh, I know, you know, the last three seasons haven't been too kind to him with injuries as well as COVID, obviously. But if this kid can stay healthy and he's playing on that top six or even on the top line with Sebastian Ajo and Seth mm -hmm. Jarvis, the, the, the sky's the limit for this kid, honestly. I really love the way that he plays the game, the physicality. He's not afraid to drop the gloves and stand up for his line mates and his teammates out there. And he digs deep. He reminds me a lot. He reminds me a lot of Zach Hyman, honestly. Maybe not, uh, you know, as tenacious or tenacious in the corners trying to dig for the puck, sure. but the physicality, the yep. grit, the determination that they both these players have. I just love both those players a lot. What's interesting with this take is when you look at the rest of the names on the list, he might not be the flashiest. And I understand yeah. how there might, you might take a little bit of heat for this, but we're also talking about fantasy value. Top 23 under and under in the league that bring it offensively and filling out those categories or are just really elite in one area. And I think Andre Svechnikov, let's not forget, drafted second overall for a reason. And you take away the injuries, and I know that's something you can always factor in. He's already played 349 games in his NHL career. Yeah. He's only 23. So as much as, yes, I think the injuries have obviously – you know, in the last year and a half, especially, he's dealt with some serious ones, too. These hasn't, haven't been minor ailments. He's had surgery. He's had significant time on the IR. If he can get healthy still, he's also in a great situation to succeed in Carolina. He doesn't have to really worry about that defensive end. He can go out there and be his rugged offensive self. Obviously, not being in the lineup to start the season has him starting off with only one point in two games. It's still only two games, five hits. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with the rest of our list right after the break. Top three best 23 and under fantasy studs in the game steal. And all three of these players are absolute studs. Big time bets for Wednesday's board coming up at the end of the show. But today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could do the same thing with your business team? You're building a roster to win the league. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tours, tools like Indeed Instant Match Assessments and Virtual Interviewers. Hate waiting? 
Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business and you have to make every dollar count. That's why you need Indeed. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team, every single day. Another top 10 list, one of our favorites to do on yes, the podcast sir. here, Flip. We're getting into the top three, 23 years old and under fantasy hockey players out there. And yep. I'm pretty sure we're going to have the exact same top yes. three. Uh, maybe not in the same order. I don't know about you, but definitely okay. the top three uh, same players in this. So I'll throw it over to you. Who sure. is number three? Because you said Cole Caulfield's at number four, right? Number five was Cole Caulfield. Number oh. four was Maurice Sider. Yes, and the yes. only thing I wanted to say about Maurice Sider is when he went through those growing pains last year, he was 21 years old. This is the NHL and he's playing the blue line. Let's get it serious here, people. It's going to take some time for him to settle in. And he still had 42 points and 207 hits, 190 block shots. He's a Calder winner for a reason. He was an all-rookie team member for a reason. And he is an absolute juggernaut on the blue line. And if not for the guy at number three on my list, Steele, <laughs> I would peg Marit Sider as the best young up-and-coming defenseman yeah. in the game at this age bracket. Obviously, we're not talking about Kale McCarr or Quinn Hughes. They're in another area of age as well but Rasmus Dahlin at number three is where I have a player that changes the game steal offensively and now he's starting to change the game with his defense and physicality we saw that emerge last year with 132 block shots 92 penalty minutes and 105 hits and look at what he's already off to already nine points 20 blocks 17 hits and look at the Buffalo Sabres start to go tease to bets. Big win over the Colorado Avalanche the other night, I believe. Yeah, yep, for nothing. And a big part of it has to do with your boy Darlene. I believe he had a goal, a goal plus two. 22 minutes of ice time and three block shots. What more can you say about this guy who's really starting to be, I think, a perennial Norris threat? Yeah, it's incredible. You know, last season was all, was just a huge stepping stone in this player's NHL career. Went from 53-point career high in 2021 uh, to a 73-point career high the yeah. next season. So, uh, you know, he's getting it done offensively. 15 goals last year, 58 assists. He's a banger league beauty. Had 92 oh, yeah. penalty minutes last year. Continue, he's probably going to get up to 65 or 70 this season. The peripherals are fantastic, over 100 blocks and hits to over 200 shots. Like you said, he's becoming a perennial uh, Norris candidate and what he's doing at such a young age right now. So this is exactly what Buffalo needs, you know, to get in the right direction. Having one of those one of those uh, defensemen who can really just be, uh, you know, another elite offensive player for this caliber team, not just getting it done on the defensive side of things, but Join, uh, jumping up in the play, joining in on odd man rushes and just being able to facilitate and play make as well. And Rasmus Dallin does that uh, very beautifully. If the Buffalo Sabres can get what they've already seen from Rasmus Dallin out of Owen Power, this team is not only going to be hard to play against every single night, they're going to be hard to play against for a number of years. We know Rasmus Dallin and Owen Power are both under contract. Mm -hmm. I like the makeup of this Sabres team a lot. Devin Levi has been out. Let's see what he can do. UPL stepping in right now. Not looking too shabby either, Steele. I know, again, small sample yeah. size. But I think if this team can get even more out of its blue line, it's going to end from the other pieces on its blue line. Matthias Samuelson is also an interesting name. I think it's going to allow Rasmus Dahlin to really do his thing, and that's bad news for Eastern Conference opponents. <laughs> What's good news for the rest of y'all, though, is the rest of our list. Who Do you do you have Dahlin at three as well? Because I think our top three are the same. Yeah, I also have Dahlin at three, and I believe we also have the top two the same. Yes. Tim Stutzla comes in at, at yes. number two from the Ottawa Senators, and I almost had Rasmus Dahlin uh, ahead of him 
just because okay. of those peripherals. But Timmy Stutzler's peripherals are also banging right now as well. Bang for your buck. Uh, 114 hits last year. The physicality on this kid is increasing every single game. 50 blocks as well, which is nice to see. Over 200 shots. I could possibly see him getting close to 300 shots this upcoming season. And like Rasmus Dahlin, he's got 10 points in eight games. Two goals, eight assists. You'd like to start him, uh, start seeing him put the puck in the back of the net a little bit more. He's down to a 6.9 yeah. shooting percentage right now, which is the lowest of his career. Again, only eight games into the season, but he's always been double digits for shooting percentage. So uh, just finding a way to get the puck to get in the back of the net is something that we're going to have to see from this Ottawa team as well as Tim Stutzler because they have been very inconsistent with their game it's so true. far to start the, uh, you know, in, the, in this month of October. We'll see if, it, if there's any change in November, but Tim Stutzler cracks the top three he makes it to uh, makes it to number two but he's not number one this is interesting steel because when i look at these breakdowns sometimes into players seasons and when you look at tim stutzla just at the fact that he has basically almost been a point per game player since entering the nhl yeah 218 games and 187 points in the regular season is impressive number one and when you look at his career his the kickoff to his career 19 years of age 53 games in the nhl 29 points it's pretty good it doesn't exactly jump off the page or anything crazy but it's pretty good and then you look at he finished not top five in calder voting ninth in calder voting he came into the league with these other players steel kareel kaprizov jason robertson igor shesterkin josh norris Finishing ahead of him that year for Calder voting, I think just goes to show you the quality of what this player really can be. And let's not get it twisted. Yes, the Ottawa Senators have been inconsistent for sure. The blue line is very banged up right now. Yeah. That's going to be an issue. But up front, there are not many teams that I like as much as the Ottawa Senators in terms of what they can do when they're on their game. They offer a lot of different looks and the power play can be effective. But you mentioned it. Can they string it together? Can Timmy Stutz really stand up and be a leader? That's what I want to see from him because I think it's been established deal. Fantasy-wise, he's an absolute stud, and that's why he's number two on both of our lists. But he's got to get it going in terms of affecting games in the clutch and getting it done for his teammates around him. You mentioned his ability to facilitate. I think I'd like to see him shoot that puck a whole lot more. I know he's off to the year. What? How many shots does he have so far? 28, I believe. Yeah, 28. That's not too bad, but I still would like to see it go even higher. And I think that's what this team really needs from him. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So he's getting the opportunity. It's really just finding uh, those uh, those small moments where he can really shoot a little bit quicker and get the puck on net. And again, yeah. his teammates like Brady Kachuk always there uh, looking for the rebound. Jack Hughes, though, at number hey. one, though, on the list for both Gotta of be. us. Um, might have to retract my statement of JT hey. Miller fantasy. We'll see at the end of the year. We'll see at the end of the year. I wasn't going to say anything, points. Steele. I'm glad you brought it up. We'll have to see at the end of the year who has more fantasy points, but Jack Hughes is off to an uh, insane start right now. I just, you know, I saw that uh, graphic the other day or that that little tidbit. Uh, the, the guy's on pace for over 200 points because of how he's what he's doing over the last Whoa. three games. His Whoa. last five games, he didn't. Uh, his last five games is incredible. He didn't record a point uh, in that win over Minnesota, but the last four games, he had one goal against Buffalo three assists against Washington, four assists against Montreal and two goals, two assists for four points against the New York Islanders. So absolutely insane. What Jack Hughes is doing. Uh, this has nothing to do with it, but just to throw a little bit of a nitpick <laughs> into here for Jack Hughes, the guy is terrible in the circle, in the yes, faceoff draws. He is so bad at taking yeah, faceoffs, but that doesn't necessarily matter because that is never really a category <laughs> that someone has well, to worry about. So yeah. all you really have to worry about is this guy's offensive production because five goals, 13 assists for a total of 18 points in eight games is outstanding. Yeah, 18 points, I believe, as I last checked, it was still leading the NHL. 18 points next closest is Artemi Panarin with 15 and Dylan Larkin with 15. Also, let's be real here. The fact that the only thing that I think of when you talk about those face-off numbers is – how does this team still score so many goals when they're losing puck possession so often off the yeah. draws? Obviously, I'm not digging into the numbers as deep, and there's probably an explanation there. But my take here on Jack Hughes is this is how gifted offensively he is, 
it's good enough to overlook some of these more minor things like losing a, what he's only winning 33% of his draws this year, every 30, year, every year, 35 so on his career. He's like right in around this number, which is bizarre. He can, other than Connor McDavid, he's the best skater in the league. And he is steel. When I thought about this take, what I think I like about the most about Jack Hughes, and obviously it runs in the family. These kids, all three of them, are big-time performers. They can all change the course of the game, and especially Jack. He has that kind of offensive ability. He has that kind of ice in his veins, and you and I have talked about this at length. The second he was able to find some consistency with staying in the lineup, and last year was the first time that he got close to playing a full season, 78 games. This guy is elite. He's at the top of this list for a reason, and he's the kind of player in the keeper dynasty realm. I don't care if you're coming after me with three or four first round picks. I'm hanging on to Jack Hughes yeah. because also, let's be honest, you want a piece of what's going on in New Jersey. Yeah, and I know, uh, I, I know Connor McDavid was injured the last week. He just oh. returned into the lineup against the Calgary Flames, but I've, I've already been hearing on TV – uh, from all Ooh. from some of these analysts that you there could be a debate that Jack Whoa. Hughes could be the best player Whoa. in the NHL right now. So that, that is a hot a, take. That could be a fun conversation to have. But just the yeah. way he's playing, the way he skates, the way he yep. he improves his teammates as well, mm -hmm. um, it is honestly just incredible to see from such a young player. So Jack Hughes cracks the number one spot on this top ten list of hockey players, fantasy hockey players, twenty three years old and under. We got to get to our big time bets, uh, four game board for Wednesday yes, night. But of course, this episode is also brought to you by the Sleeper app. The NHL is in full swing right now. And you know, we got you covered here on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Flip and I both love the NHL. We love watching hockey and we know you do too. And that's why we need to tell you about the Sleeper app. The Sleeper app is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And it is our go-to for daily, uh, daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. With the Sleeper app, you can win 100 times your cash on Daily Fantasy. And fans can also play Fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, CFB on Sleeper. The NHL has never been more exciting than it is now with studs like Jack Hughes, Whoa. Timmy Stutzla, Rasmus Dahlin, and Kale McCarr at your fingertips. Just pick more or less on stats for these stars on stats like goals, assists, save, plus, minus, and more. Flip and I are doing this every other night because the Sleeper app is fantastic to use. You heard me, fantasy hockey fans, a hundred time payout on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right, and you could win big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit that subscribe, hit the follow button, leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. Flip and I appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Hopefully we can uh, get some <laughs> winning picks here for big-time bets. It has been an absolute, uh, I'm not going to swear, but it's been an absolute dog show right now okay. uh on the big time bets for me uh not okay. a great night it actually started off pretty good you know Connor bedard yep. comes out and scores the yep. uh, scores a goal in the first 28 seconds of the game i was like oh this over one and a half is gonna hit yeah and it does not the only one that hits is that jets rangers that under was a good pick half that was a good pick but unfortunately go one for three on monday night we're recording early so we don't know what happened tuesday night in that maple leafs kings game as well as nashville and vancouver but yep. nonetheless, Wednesday night, four games. What are your three picks? So, little bit of a better ride for me. Not too much better. Right now, I'm sitting at a nine and six lock of the night record. And overall, not too bad steal overall. And I think what the most important angle here is right now with bets is it's a long season. So, like Steele's been saying, if you're not hitting bets, dial it back a little bit. Go with a couple of micro parlays and just save the cash. It's a long season. Yeah. Overall record for me, I'm just bringing it up 31 and 20. Not too bad. Let's keep it rolling tonight, though, Steel. And I'm really liking these games. Buffalo at Philly. Dallas is hosting Calgary, I believe. And the third game I'm looking at is the Colorado Avalanche at home against the Blues. So let me just fire these off real quick. First pick. The St. Louis Blues are 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. 
I know Jordan Bennington looked pretty good over the first couple of games, but that performance that they put out against the Vancouver Canucks 5 nothing last time, you can't help but feel, but that might be one of those demoralizing kinds of losses that spins this team out on a little bit of a losing streak. That's the angle I'm taking here. And here's the other one, Steele. Colorado, 7-2-1 against this St. Louis Blues team in their last 10. Yeah. I'm taking them on the puck line. Three of their last four wins have been by two or more goals against St. Louis. I think Colorado is rolling right now. They bounce back from that performance against the Sabres. This is the difference in these teams. I'm really liking Colorado at home on the puck line. And very quickly, Stars at home on the money line. This just feels, or sorry, on the road against the Calgary Flames. This just feels like free loot steal. I almost made it my lock of the night because <laughs> Calgary is reeling. Dallas is feeling it. Jake Ottinger is not the goalie you want to go up against right now if you're the Calgary Flames, who cannot buy a goal. Jonathan Huberto looks asleep. Nazem Kadri also looks cerebral in a bad way. And I really do think at minus 130 right now, you should be jumping all over the Dallas Stars. And my lock of the night, after what I think was the best performance that I've seen from this Buffalo Sabres team in a long time against the red-hot Colorado Avalanche, Buffalo points in eight of their last 10 against Philly. Give me the Sabres on the money line. Minus 110 as my lock of the night. I like all three of those pick picks, yes. especially the Colorado Avalanche one. First pick of the night with you on this one. Avalanche on the puck line against the St. Louis Blues. Yes. Um, they, they, you know, they started off red hot. They've lost their last two. They've actually been shut out in their last two games. Uh, to the Buffalo Buffalo Sabers and Pittsburgh Penguins, both times losing four nothing. So not you're not going to see this again from the Colorado Avalanche in three straight games, especially against a Blues team which they usually dominate. So I'm also Avalanche on the puck line against the Blues. I'm also going McKinnon anytime goal. He had three straight games with three goals. Uh, you know, prior to those two losses to Buffalo and Pittsburgh, I think he's going to get back on the score sheet. I'm going Nathan McKinnon anytime goal. And for my lock of the night, it is going to be the Anaheim Ducks and Arizona Coyotes over six and a half goals at plus 100 right now. Uh, Big game for the Coyotes against the Chicago Blackhawks. They won eight to one. Uh, An absolute comeback of the century for the (laughs) Anaheim Ducks against the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, with a a game winner by your boy Mason McTavish in the last 11 seconds of the third period. Tristan Jari just looks awful. I don't think... um, I, this is the worst I've ever seen Tristan Jari, just as a little bit of a side note. And Pittsburgh is just crumbling right now uh, in front of our very own eyes. So yeah. I'm going to go with the Ducks and the Coyotes for my lock of the night over six and a half at plus 100. There it is. Uh, by the way, love those picks. Number two, it is, of course, only nine or ten games in. We were wrong about the Boston Bruins steal, but there are a couple of our predictions are early starting to pan out. We were worried about this Pittsburgh Penguins team. Yeah. They are in dead last. We were worried about the Washington Capitals. They, I know, have nine points, but I don't think they're going to be getting it done at the end of the year. No. And I think one of the last takes that I took some heat for was the Arizona Coyotes yeah, looking just like about they to bring that up. a postseason team. And again, I know it's eight points. I know they're four and four. I understand that they're only eight games deep into the season steal. But you can't help but feel that things in this NHL are a changing. That was what I just wanted to end the show with. The changing of the guard is upon us, my friend. And it's actually leaving for some very, very awesome hockey. Who would have pegged Frank Vitrano and the Ducks as one of the best teams to start the season? No, not me. But anyway, here we go, pal. We're just getting warmed up. The hottest goal scorer in the NHL right now, Frank Vitrano. Never would have seen that coming. Also, just a side note before we wrap up this episode, if if this is out there, Bet on the San Jose Sharks to not get more than double-digit wins because they are 0-9-1. and They are terrible. They're the worst hockey team right now in the <laughs> NHL. Yeah, they are brutal out there. That's but thank you so much for tuning into the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, making it your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find our episodes. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. We shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.